Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on vibrations and waves. The topic of this video is the anatomy of a wave, and we want to know what is wavelength, what is amplitude, and how do you determine these quantities from a wave pattern. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. As a transverse wave moves through a medium, particles of the medium vibrate back and forth in a direction that's perpendicular to the direction that the wave is moving. As particles vibrate back and forth about their fixed position, a recognizable sine wave pattern is produced within the medium. Here's a diagram of a transverse wave. The middle line there is known as the equilibrium or the rest position. It's the position particles would assume if they were not vibrating back and forth. But once a wave moves through the medium, particles vibrate back and forth from a maximum high position to a maximum low position. This produces crests, the high position, and troughs, the low positions, within the pattern. There's two quantities to point out here. The first one is known as the wavelength. It's the distance from the crest to the next adjacent crest. It doesn't have to be from the first to the second crest. It could be from the second to the third crest. It could even be the distance from a trough to the next adjacent trough as shown. The symbol for wavelength is the Greek letter lambda. It's labeled there on the diagram. The second quantity to point out is the amplitude. It's the distance from the rest position to a crest position as shown on the diagram. It could also be measured from the rest position to the trough position as shown. In a previous video, this one, I discussed longitudinal waves. There's a link in the description section to that video if you need to review them. A longitudinal wave is a wave in which particles of the medium vibrate back and forth in a direction that's parallel to the direction that the wave is moving. Let's suppose that we had a tuning fork and its vibrations were sending vibrations through a pipe filled with air. Here's a diagram of the tuning fork and the rest position of those air particles inside of the pipe. But as the tines of the tuning fork begin to vibrate back and forth, a pattern is established inside of the pipe as the air particles vibrate back and forth. That pattern consists of regions of space where the air particles are densely packed. We refer to those as compressions. And in between the compressions are other regions where the air is less densely packed, and we refer to those as rarefactions. It's this pattern of compressions and rarefactions that we would observe moving through the pipe. In order to, de to determine the wavelength, we would have to measure the length of the repeating pattern. That is, the distance from one compression to the next adjacent compression, or from one rarefaction to the next adjacent rarefaction. The amplitude is a little different. It's the maximum displacement that a particle makes from its rest position. To determine the amplitude of a longitudinal wave, we would have to focus upon a single particle and we would watch it vibrate from a rightmost position back to a leftmost position, back to a rightmost position, and so forth. And then we would determine the amplitude by measuring from the rest position to the rightmost position, or from the rest position to the leftmost position. And that's the amplitude. So the wavelength is the distance from a crest to the next adjacent crest, which works out great for transverse waves, but for longitudinal waves that don't have crests, you need the more general definition that the wavelength is the length of the repeating pattern of the wave. It is the distance measured from any point on a wave to the corresponding point in the next cycle of the wave pattern. You, at some point during your physics class, you're going to have to count the number of waves. And you do so by a method called finger tracing. You literally take your finger, you put it on the first point of the wave, and you begin to trace over it, and you count waves as you do. This animation illustrates the process. Put my finger on the first point, up to the crest is a quarter of a wave, down back to the rest is another quarter, down to the trough is another quarter, and I count quarter of a wavelengths. Going from a rest up to a high point or a high point to a low point, any one of those measurements is a quarter of a wavelength. When you're done, you end up with a counting a number of quarter of a wavelengths, like 12 quarters of a wavelengths, which means you have three waves. The summary of the method is here. Rest to crest, that's a quarter of a wave. Crest down to rest, another quarter. Rest down to trough, another quarter. And trough back up to rest is a quarter. You'll get better and faster at this and more comfortable with the method as you practice it. And you'll start counting half wavelengths. And as you count half wavelengths, it might go something like this. You start at rest, you go up to crest, down to the rest. That's a half wavelength. From rest down to trough, back up to rest, 
another half a wavelength. You repeat the process counting half wavelengths, and when you're done, you get the total number of half wavelengths, six half wavelengths, six times one half is three waves. And after you've gotten more practice with that, you'll do the whole thing together. You'll go up, down, down, up, and that's a wave, and you'll count full wavelengths. But at some point, you need to internalize the idea of a wavelength in order to count the number of waves in a pattern. Let's practice counting waves, beginning with diagram A. I'm going to count by half waves, which means I'm going to start at rest, go to crest, back to rest, and that's a half a wave. Or from rest down the trough, back up to rest, that's a half a wave. So starting here at point A, I'm going to go up to the crest and back down to point B, that's a half of a wave. And then starting at point B, I'm going to go to the trough, back up to rest, that's another half wave. I have two half waves. I'm going to go from C to D, that's up to crest, down to rest, a third half of a wavelength in here from D to E is my final fourth half wavelength. Now I go four times a half and I get two waves. I've counted two waves in diagram A. I'm going to repeat in diagram B beginning at point A, go from A to B, that's a half of a wave. I'm going to go from B to C, that's another half of a wave. From C to D, that's my third half. D to E is my fourth half. And finally, E to F is my fifth half of a wave. Five times a half is two and a half wavelengths. Now I'm going to pick up the pace a little bit. I'm going to count by full waves here in diagram C. So I'm going to start at rest, up to crest, down to rest, from rest down to trough, up to, up to rest. That whole thing is a full wave. So I'm going to count full waves in diagram C. So start at A, and I'm going to go crest to rest, to trough, to back to rest, to point B. That's a full wave. Now from B to C, that's another full wave. That's my second full wave. From C to D, my third full wave. And then my fourth full wave is going from D to E. Four full wavelengths there. That's how many waves I've counted. In diagram E, I'm going to do the same thing. It gets a little tricky at the end. A to B is a wave. B to C is a second wave. C, C to D is a thir third wave. D to E is a fourth wave. E to F is a fifth wave, and now there's one last half of a wavelength there. From F to G is not a full wave, it's a half a wave, so I've counted 5.5 waves in this diagram D. Another skill you'll need to develop is determining the wavelength in a pattern. Let's suppose that you're told that a rope is being shook and there's a wave traveling through it. You're told the length of the rope and you're shown the wave pattern and you want to determine the wavelength. Here's our first example. We're told that this rope is 6.0 meters in length and that's the wave pattern that's in it. So I trace over the wave and I count that there are one and a half waves within that 6.0 meter long rope. So I say that 6.0 meters is equal to one. 1.5 lambda or 1.5 wavelengths. And then I divide both sides by 1.5 and I determine that the wavelength is equal to 4.0 meters. Here's my second example. This is a 5.0 meter long rope and there's the pattern that's vibrating inside of it. So I count over that pattern and I determine that there's 2.5 wavelengths inside of the pattern. I say 5.0 meters is equal to 2.5 wavelengths. I divide both sides by 2.5 and I get the wavelength is equal to 2.0 meters. Now let's discuss how you would determine the amplitude from a diagram. The amplitude is the distance from rest to crest, or the height of a wave measured from the rest position. This works great for transverse waves, but longitudinal waves don't have crests, so we need a more general definition. Like the amplitude is the maximum upward or downward or rightward or leftward displacement from rest that a particle experiences during any cycle of vibration. To illustrate, let's consider an animation. This is a medium, and this is a snapshot in time of a transverse wave moving through the medium. As the wave moves through the medium, each particle vibrates up and down repeatedly from a high to a low position. The amplitude is the maximum displacement that a particle makes from its rest position. It can be measured from the rest position to the highest position or from the rest position down to the lowest position. 
For a longitudinal wave, let's consider one traveling through a slinky using this animation. This is a slinky and this is a longitudinal wave that is moving through the slinky. As the wave moves through the slinky, each coil vibrates back and forth repeatedly from a rightmost to a leftmost position. The amplitude is the maximum displacement that a coil makes from its rest position. It can be measured from the rest position to the rightmost position or from the rest position to the leftmost most position. For students, the most common mistake is to measure the amplitude from that one extreme to the other extreme. You end up getting twice the, di twice the distance that you need to get. The amplitude is from rest measured to one of the extreme positions in the vibrational cycles of the particles. A wave is an energy transport phenomenon that transports energy from one location to another without the actual movement of physical matter. The amount of amplitude with which the particles vibrate is reflective of the amount of energy that's put into the wave at the source and that is transported by the wave through the medium. For instance, if I were to take a rope and vibrate it gently and put very little energy into it, I would get a low amplitude wave. On the other hand, if I took the same rope and vibrated it like this and put a lot of energy in it, I would get a high amplitude wave. The amplitude is reflective of the amount of energy put into the wave. The relationship is a power relationship that's, that goes energy is proportional to the amplitude squared. This means that if you were to double the amplitude, you would increase the amount of energy being transported by a factor of four. And if you were to triple the amplitude, the amount of energy being transported would increase increased by a factor of 9, and quadrupling the amplitude means there's 16 times as much energy being transported. This, these relationships are reflected in this table. The table shows in rows 1 and 2 the amplitude being doubled from 1 to 2, while the E being increased from 2 to 8 by a factor of times 4. Rows 1 and 3 show the amplitude being tripled from 1 to 3, and the energy increasing by a factor of 9 from 2 2 to 18 units. And rows 1 and 4 show the amplitude being quadrupled from 1 to 4 and the energy increasing by a factor of 16 from 2 to 32 units. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comments section below. Now for your action plan. Here are four resources you'll find on our website, any one of which would be good next steps. I've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have an interactive which allows you to sort of explore. You have a concept builder and a calculator later pad problem set that allow you to practice and finally you have a tutorial page that you can read. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H and I thank you for watching.